good morning and welcome to Wyatt Park Christian Church. We are so glad that you are here with us, whether you're sitting in these pews or if you're at home watching online. We are very glad to have you here. I only have a couple of announcements this morning that I'm aware of, so if there's something extra, someone may have to let me know about it, but uh, there will be a deacons meeting right after the 915 service this morning, and you're going to be down in the fireside room. And then I would like to point out that we have these purple connect cards. If you are visiting with us today for the first time and you have not filled out one of these cards, please do so so we can have a record of your attendance. And just drop these cards off in these offering plates as you come forward for communion later on in the service. Or you can hand them to myself or to Pastor Ben or to uh, our children's director, Miss Tanya, uh, after the services. But uh, I would love for you to fill these cards out. Are there any other announcements? Okay, why don't we stand and worship? Right. Good morning, everybody. Here's a new one. Some days I touch the clouds, some days my best friend has been the cold, hard ground. But there's mercy every morning, it comfort through the night. My eyes are fixed on Jesus, and I'm going to be all right. I've got the hallelujah, fill it down in my soul. i got that hallelujah, fill it down, won't let go. Born again, yes and amen. places in the world we'd be risking our lives by doing what we're doing. This simple gathering for an hour of singing and praise could be life-threatening. Help us to never take that blessing for granted. Lord, we also ask that you keep the eyes of our hearts open to your blessings that remain in disguise. Those days when our best friend is the cold, hard ground and we can't get off of it, and those days when the darkness looms, Help us to know that just because it's raining now, that doesn't mean the sun will not shine. 
We know if we keep our eyes on you, that light will conquer the darkness. Help us remember that so we can begin each day with a hallelujah. Because for all you have done, for the prayers that are unanswered, and all you have yet to do, you deserve our praise. In the prisons, in the free world, in the heavens and the earth, we will praise you anywhere and everywhere. And all God's people say, Ben was going to uh, finish talking about perseverance, but he decided he didn't want to follow through with that. <laughs> oh, see, you're, you're sharp. You're sharp. All right. Uh, you know, I, I shared with you last week uh, my favorite verse, and that's uh, James 4, 8, and it's come near to God, and God will come near to you. Draw near to God, and God will draw near to you. So uh, the thing I didn't tell you was that was only partial. Uh, that a uh, partial verse. So I'd like to go ahead and share that whole verse with you and the verse before it. So let's take a few moments and reflect on this scripture. sing together. This is my 
After this time of prayer, there's going to be a, a special music uh, that uh, Leslie's going to sing for us, and the song is called Hold On. And so while we have this moment of prayer, just a word of anyone out there, you feel like you're holding on to something, you're, you're holding on and you feel like you, you're just getting tired and you can't do it anymore. The good news is, is that when you can't hold on anymore, God is always holding on to you. God's strong hand is always holding on to you. And so in this moment of prayer, let me invite you just to let that truth sink deep down into your soul. Let us go before the Lord in prayer. Our gracious God, without you, we are not able to please you. And so we ask today that you would mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Lord, I just want to lift up the prayers of myself, and on behalf of this faith community, I want to invite your Holy Spirit to be present in this place and to be known in this place to everyone that's here. Whatever people have brought with them into this place, whether it is anxieties, whether it's fear of any kind, sadness, and even joy, yes, Lord, I ask that we would be able to have a picture, a vision of, of you on the mountain and in the valley. As we sung that song, I'll praise you anywhere. Help us, Father, to know that praise isn't dependent on our circumstances. And so we ask that you would fill our mouth with words of praise, even in the tough times of life even in the times of persevering through difficult things. I know you're with your people today, and so remind them and speak to them with your very own voice, I pray, of your presence with them, of your peace. Speak your peace over your people today, I pray, that we would be able to continue to faithfully serve you as we love you. We're so thankful for you and for this church family, for people that are here today or people who are watching online people who might watch this service sometime later in the week or maybe even stumble upon it years from now as they're just doing a Google search. We don't know how you might use this technology in this recorded service today, but we know that your spirit is active and present. And so do the work in us today, we pray. And now together, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples as we say, 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. come to this moment at the table, we want to light this candle as a remembrance of the presence of the Holy Spirit that burns in our hearts and lights the way for us in every season of life. Today, as we gather around this table, I do want to mention, if, if you are a visitor, if you're new here today and you think uh, that you need to give something for our tithes and offerings. We just want to say welcome to you. Let, let your uh, Connect card, the purple Connect card, let that be what you provide to us instead of uh, money today. For those that are members, if you're an active attender of the church and, and you want to give uh, in the offering, we have offering plates on the outside of the aisles over here. Of course, if you rather do something on uh, tithely, there's, there's mobile options to give as well. But that's a part of the way that we worship. And I don't know about you, but I grew up in a church that we, we passed the offering plates down the rows and stuff. And I always thought that was a weird thing to do. 
and I always kind of felt like it was just like a break in the service, you know? And then as I've gotten older and thought more about it, I realized it's just another part of our, our worship in giving of our tithes and offerings uh, to, the, to the place where we are committed as, uh, as Christians to say, this is my faith community. And so thank you for the way that you worship God in that way. And as we come to this table, uh, just a, re- a reminder to us all that this table here, this bread and this cup uh, that represents the, the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ is, o- is open to anyone in this place who uh, you want to deepen your walk with Christ, that you want to be fed by Christ. Uh, this table's open to you. This is not the table of Wyatt Park. It's the table of Jesus Christ. And I found this, uh, or I've heard this invitation said uh, by different pastors in different churches, but I'd just like to um, give you this invitation to the table today. This is the table, not of the church, but of Christ Jesus. And it is made ready for those who love God and for those who want to love God more. So come you who have much faith, and come you who have little faith. You who have been here often, and you who have not been here long. You who have tried to follow Christ, but have failed, come because it is the Lord who invites you to come. It is God's will that those who want to know God more should meet him here at this table. Let us pray. Lord, it is in, indeed a pleasure and a joy for us to come to this table week after week. It never gets old. It's not routine. It's not just tradition. There is something happening in this moment when we center in this worship service and in our minds these elements of bread and cup that bring us back to that moment when you met with your disciples in that upper room. You knew it was going to be your last supper with them before your crucifixion, and yet you shared it so freely, so abundantly, and you shared it with every single one around that table, even the ones that you knew would betray you in one way or another. You served them. You washed their feet. And so, Lord, today, may we see you, may we envision you with arms wide out to everybody in this room who wants to know you more, who comes knowing that they have failed and they have sinned against you. We come before you and we accept your washing of our feet to make us clean, to change us. Lord, we're so thankful for this gift of this table. May it change us today more into the image of your Son, Jesus Christ. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. The way that we do communion here at Wyatt Park is you'll just come down the center of uh, the the sanctuary here. And if you need a gluten-free wafer, someone will be handing out gluten wafers right here. If you would like regular bread, there's bread on either side. And you can either dip your bread or your wafer, if you want to, into the chalices. If you would rather have a single-serve cup, those are also on the ends of either side of the sanctuary. My friends, we remember on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, and he blessed it, and he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples. And he said, this is my body, which was given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then after supper, Jesus took the cup and he blessed it and he gave it to his disciples and he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for the forgiveness of your sins every time you drink of this. Do it in remembrance of me. And friends, every time we meet in this place to eat of the bread and drink of the cup with Christians past, present, future, and all around the world, we indeed proclaim that mystery of faith, that Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Would you come and meet us at the table this morning? There is a river of gladness that pours from Emmanuel's rains. The sinner was plunged beneath the flood and God saved. walk in forgiveness all of my guilt was erased the chains of the 
going through the book of James. This is our second week uh, in the book of James, still in chapter one. If you missed last week, you can find the message on Facebook or our YouTube channel. I invite you to check that out if you need to get caught up on that. Um, as we're turning to James 1, 13 through 18 today, uh, another little announcement about tonight. It's our first, uh, it's, it's uh, I'll be leading it, we're calling it Vespers. Evening prayer is Another term for it, we'll be reading some scriptures, having some, some guided prayer, some silent prayer, 
Uh, and just a, a sh just it won't be a very long and involved time, probably about 45 minutes uh, of just kind of welcoming in the evening of, of Sunday, getting ready for going into the work week. And uh, so anyone's invited to come. We'll be in the library, which is just right outside, right by the friendship area. And that'll be at 6 o'clock tonight. I uh, look forward to seeing anyone that can make it to our Vespers. And it's, one, it's something that doesn't build on the other weeks. And so if you miss one week and you can't come for a couple weeks, come any time that you can. Because each session is going to be kind of a standalone time together. So James 1, 13 through 18, just five verses today. Um, before we read that, so last week we talked about uh, growing as people uh, in perseverance. The, the title of the message last week and this week is Growing Up Means Growing in Perseverance. Last week was part one, this is part two. So for those of you that thought you could escape perseverance, uh, those of you who thought that perseverance was just a one-week thing, I'm sorry, we're gonna, <laughs> we've got more for you. But last week, we, we considered perseverance against the trials of life. We considered the trials of life like a windstorm that, that tests a tree's roots. And we talked about our, our lives sort of being the tree and our roots sort of grow, going down into the ground, which is Jesus Christ. And the take-home point last week was growing in perseverance isn't about you becoming more confident in your ability to cope, but you growing in trust, trusting in the goodness of God, even on the worst day or days of your life. So let's go, let's continue to read here in James chapter 1, beginning in verse 13. When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. Then, after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. Don't be deceived, my brothers and sisters. Every good and perfect gift is from above. Coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like the shifting shadows, he chose to give us birth through the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits of all he created. So last week's message, as I said, was about perseverance through trials and tribulations. And when we talk about trials and tribulations, we're talking about things that are largely out of our control. We don't control whether we have a good day or a bad day as far as the things that happen to us. Maybe our attitude we can control. Um, but the message on perseverance last week, um, you know, we talked about how just as a tree is guaranteed to be tested by the wind, so all of us as humans are guaranteed to be tested by trials and tribulations. And so the same is true for what we're going to talk about today. And the key word that we're going to talk about today is, is another T word, and it's the word temptation. Temptation. Um, there is a difference between trials and temptations. They're not the same thing. Sometimes they can feel similar, and they can feel like they're related to one another, um, but they are not necessarily the same Thing. And so as we talk about temptations today and resisting, persevering through temptations, let me stand up here with you and give you 100% give you uh, honesty, right? Talking about temptations. Um, this past week on Sunday is my ice cream day. Sundays are my, I go to Chris and Kate's when they're open for the season. So last Sunday I went and I wanted a pumpkin cheesecake twister, a large pumpkin cheesecake twister. They're very good. They were sold out last Sunday, so I got a strawberry cheesecake large twister. Now, they ran out of their large plastic cups, which they're a pretty good size if you get the large. They gave me like an extra, extra large uh, styrofoam cup of strawberry cheesecake ice cream. So Becca saw my obnoxiously large strawberry cheesecake cup, and I ate half on Sunday night and saved the other half for Monday night. Tuesday, I had the thought after going to the store, I wonder if they have pumpkin cheesecake twister. I wonder if they, because they didn't have it on Sunday, and that's why I went. And so I went on Tuesday, 
and it felt like a working of the Lord. They had, they had, everything was in stock. So I went to Chris and Kate's, and I got a large pumpkin cheesecake twister on Tuesday, and I walked in the house, and Becca was like, I think you've got a problem. I committed, I, I agreed, I mean, I was like, but I was honest about it, I brought it in, I was like, listen, I got, it's another ice cream for tonight, and I said, but I've committed that if I'm going to eat this tonight, I've got to get up at five in the morning to go for a walk slash run, and I did that. So, but as I'm talking about temptation, um, sometimes we, we first go to food and things that taste good to us, and, and sometimes that can overlap, but really the temptations that we're talking about today are things that are very destructive to us, and certainly eating too much sweets could be destructive to us, right? Uh, So it just really depends on the context of the temptation that we're going through and what it does to you and what it does to the people around you. The Greek word that James uses that is translated as temptation is the word peirazzo. And uh, this word peirazzo is found all throughout the New Testament. Notably, it's found in the story where Jesus is in the wilderness for 40 days and he's being tempted by Satan. In this case, it's not like uh, a neutral temptation that Jesus is facing. There's there's the evil adversary, Satan, who's tempting Jesus. So in this instance, temptation's not like, you know, it's it's just not something that, well, I had an ice cream and I shouldn't have had an ice cream, right? That's not what we're talking about. If you continue reading in the New Testament, some of the other contexts for peirazzo is the Pharisees coming and tempting Jesus, Remember those stories where they want Jesus to say something that he shouldn't so that they can accuse him of blasphemy? And so uh, another translation for peirazzo in the New Testament is, is trap. So for instance, in Matthew twenty two eighteen, 18, it says, But Jesus, knowing their evil intent, the Pharisees, he said, You hypocrites, why are you trying to trap me? Right? So temptation or trap it's all a tool of the enemy. When we're talking about temptation here biblically, it's a tool of the enemy to trip us up, to uh, bring us away from a right relationship with God. So when we talk temptation, we're not primarily talking about your sweet grandma, Mabel, who wants to give you two brownies after you just had the first brownie. That's not what we're talking about. And you might ask, well, what's the difference between Aunt Mabel wanting to give me more brownies than I can eat, that I should eat. Well, the the difference between that kind of temptation and the temptation that we see in the New Testament is intent. Your sweet grandma Mabel is not trying to make you eat a brownie to destroy your life. Are you are you tracking with me? She's not giving you a brownie because she wants you to have diabetes. She just loves you and she makes good things for you to eat because she loves you. That's not Satan's intent when it comes to temptation and traps. He wants to trip us up. And so the temptation that's talked about in the New Testament is is harmful and it's destructive to ourselves and harmful and destructive to those around us. And if you'll think back to the beginning of, of the scriptures in Genesis, temptation is the oldest trick in the book, isn't it? Temptation is right there in chapter three of Genesis in the creation narrative where the serpent, this uh, character that's opposed to God's work, appeals to the the self-interest of the humans there in God's paradise. The the Satan, the serpent, he appeals to their self-interest. Don't you want to be God yourself? You can be God yourself. You can know what God knows. You can have what God has. And when humans reach for that and grab for those things that are out of bounds for us, it is harmful to us and it's harmful to the people around us. Despite Adam and Eve being surrounded by all of the food that they could eat, despite living in peace and harmony with one another and with creation, self-interest comes along and says there's something else. There's just something else I'm missing that will make me happier. There's something that's missing in my life that I've got to have. And and oftentimes when we say, I've got to have this something else, it comes at the expense of others around us. Or it causes us to live out of balance that is not good for our souls or good for us mentally or emotionally. And so we know this this is the story of humanity tragically played out over and over again, right? 
Succumbing to temptation, the temptation of, of putting self-interest above all other things. And when I say self-interest, I'm talking about these actions, these words, and, and motives that elevate the individual self up at the expense of neighbors and at the expense of God's words to us of how we ought to live our lives. And so this story of humans acting out with self-interest as the rule of law above all others never has a happy ending. When we give in to the temptation to be our own God or to serve made-up gods that say, whatever you want to do is, is fine, that, that approve of, of us living out our desires and giving in to the temptation of self interest. And so as we consider James's words today in his epistle, the question arises, and I'm sure this is one of the reasons why James says it this way, is who is responsible for our temptations? We talked last week about trials coming our way, and we, I wanted us to know that trials aren't necessarily God saying, I want to test this individual and see how strong they are. And I would say the same thing about temptations. Temptations are not something that God says, I'm going to put this right here and see how they handle this situation. Uh, James says it very clearly in the text today in verse 13. He says, when tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. So we can put, sort of put that question aside for just a minute, right? We, we, we can't look to God and say, God is the one who has put this temptation in my life to see how strong I am. Now, I grew up uh, in, in a tradition, in a Christian tradition, that talked about the devil just as much as we talked about Jesus. Anyone else uh, grew up in a tradition like that? I mean, it was like Jesus and the devil. You couldn't say Jesus without talking about the devil. Um, this, the, this, the reality that we're living in today is, is the, that there is a spiritual realm that we cannot see. And it's all around us, all over this world, and it is comprised of forces that are for God's kingdom and forces that are against God's kingdom. We would say you've got the kingdom of God and then you've got the kingdom of, of darkness, the kingdom of God and the, and the kingdom of Satan. And we know from Peter's words in his letter, 1 Peter 5, 8, that there is a spiritual adversary, the Satan, the, the, the devil who goes around like a, like a roaring lion seeking people to devour and to trip up into temptation. That, that is a, just, a, just a real, uh, rea that's a reality for us as we walk and we try to follow Jesus in this world. As we, as we make ourselves in line with the kingdom of God, we have to know that there is an opposing kingdom that wants us to come apart from the kingdom of light and enter and live in the kingdom of darkness. But it's interesting here in James words, just these five verses that we read today, James doesn't mention anything about Satan, at least in this instance. He does later on in the book. When James talks about evil and temptation here, specifically in verse 14, it's interesting how he notes it. He says, each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. So James says, it's not God's doing that you're tempted. He says, it's your own evil desires that are calling you to step off the path of righteousness and light. And so at the end of the day, we can't say that God tempted us, and we cannot say the devil made me do it. <laughs> Has anyone ever wanted to say that? We know that's not true, right? The devil made me do it. We know that's just not true. We are autonomous. We have control over what we do and say and think. And so we can't point at we can't point fingers at anyone else for our cooperation with the kingdom of darkness as we do from time to time in, in our lives. There is an opportunist with each within each and every one of us. An opportunist that if there's a way that we can gratify the sense of self interest, even if it's not what God would have us to do. There is that opportunist within us that's like, well, maybe, right? And, and so anytime we are tempted, there's always that beginning moment where to be tempted is not the sin. To feel tempted to do something is not the sin. The, the sin is the action upon that initial 
thought that comes into our mind. I was thinking this past week, what if temptation only came to us in the form of some sinister, devilish voice? Right? What, what, what if, what if the, the temptation to, to sin and to seek our self-interest came in the voice of, like, that voice from those exorcist movies, you know, the, the demon voices? How easy would it be to be like, I'm not doing that. Like, who's going to want to do something? That, that, that sounding voice would, would, you know, if you were to hear the, the voice of the enemy in such a way, who would want to do that? This, the, the sad thing is, and the reason why temptation is so difficult for us is because the voice of temptation sounds very oddly like our own voices. The thoughts in our own heads is what comes to us in those moments of temptation. Satan simply just appeals to self-interest, and he cheers us on when we live in the darkness instead of the light. And so we get to verse 15 of the text, and it's, it's a sobering verse here in James 1.15, when it says, then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. The, the word desire there, when, when James says desire, the Greek word is a lust for that which is forbidden. Things that we know don't belong to us, things that we know we shouldn't have, things that we know will not only just bring us down, but it will bring down others around us. And so we're talking about a large umbrella of things we know the good things that God has said, this is for you and for your good within these boundaries. And we know the things that there are just some things that even they may be good in and of themselves, but when we elevate them on the throne of our lives and we serve pleasures, I mean, we talked about this during the season of Lent, remember going through Ecclesiastes, talking about all of the pursuits of humanity under the sun, the things that we think will make us happy, and we turn them into little gods, and then when we serve them long enough, we find out uh, they're full of empty calories. They're really good for nothing if we make them the end-all, be-all of our lives. And so when, when seeds of temptation are, are sown in our life, and we allow them to be sown in our lives and in our world, the fruit that springs up from the seeds of temptation is the fruit of anger. We see the fruit of, of hatred, the fruit of tribalism, the fruit of racism, the, the, the fruit of famine and war and death. And so this verse from verse 15, when James says, first it starts off like a little seed, but then when, it, it's, when, it, when it's birthed and it comes to life and it, when it's fully grown, he says, temptation turns in to death in one way or another, whether that's death, physical death, whether that's relational death with our, our fellow humans, or maybe it's a spiritual death. It's a separation from God. And so it, it's interesting because as, as James talks in that verse, those temptations start off really small, really small. And we might say it's harmless at first. But our temptations gone unchecked, temptations that go without being confronted by the Holy Spirit will lead to some sort of death in our life. It will lead to some sort of death in this world. And so James calls us to live with another truth in mind. There's a, there's a better, more joyful truth in mind. And this is the truth, is that God, our Heavenly Father, He is the gift giver. And so what temptations could we reach out for and get for ourselves that's better than what God has for you. You being his son, you being his daughter. What temptations could fulfill you more than being in a right relationship with your heavenly father? Verse 17, every good and perfect gift is from above. Coming down from the father of heavenly lights who does not change like shifting shadows. And so you have a, a father in heaven who's not happy one day and mad the next day. You've got a father in heaven who is the creator of the sun, the moon, and the stars, and he is head over heels for you as his child. And so James wants us to live in light of that as we struggle through this life 
as we're being called to persevere through trials and temptations. Verse 18 says that he chose, he chose to give us birth through the word of truth, that we might become a kind of first fruits of all that he created. We don't owe our existence to ourselves. Our existence is all owed to God's first initiative. He chose to create us. And so temptations and trials, they are a part of this life that we live. And until the the time when Jesus comes back to make all things new, we're going to face those winds of trials and temptations. But as as you think about your perseverance through temptations that face you on a daily basis, perhaps our perseverance against temptation, perhaps our perseverance could be aided with an active trust in God as the giver of all good things. Perhaps your perseverance against the temptation to grab whatever you want in life can be aided with this knowledge that you are a child of a God who gives good things to his children. And so you think about Psalm 23. You think about the words, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, right? The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. (laughs) Maybe that truth, maybe that truth could take root in our lives this day as we face the temptations of life. Let me share this scripture with us. This will be our to-go box scripture. I'm going to try this out a little bit. You ever go to a restaurant and you have too much and you have to take some home? This is your to-go box scripture. This is from 1 Corinthians 10, 13. And I hope it tastes as good later as it does right now. But no temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, get that, when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure. Would you read that with me as we close up this message? No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. Brothers and sisters, Jesus faced every temptation that we faced. He's gone that road before us, and in him is your victory. In Jesus Christ is your perseverance against all trials and against all temptations. Praise be to God. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your power at work within us, within our mortal bodies, that day after day are seeing decay. Our time on this earth is limited, but our eyes are up ahead, looking for a better age to come, a better time to come. But until that day sweeps in, until King Jesus comes back with a shout of command to bring in the new Jerusalem to make this a new earth, until that day... Lord, we walk in the power of your Holy Spirit. And it is your power that gives us the ability to endure all things, to face trials, and to overcome temptations. And for those today, Father, who are facing temptations and they feel powerless against them, Lord, I pray that your grace would find them right where they're at. Let them know that today is a new day, a new day for new decisions a new day to be washed clean, that in Christ there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And so for those who are failing at the moment, I pray, God, for your grace to sweep them up and pick them up. Let them know you're with them, that you haven't abandoned them, that you're not going to turn your back on them. And Lord, for those of us that have been through some things, that we're on a mountaintop right now, I pray that you would give us eyes to see those around us who need some help. 
who need a traveling partner in life. Help us to remember, Father, no matter what situation in life we are in, that we all stand on even ground at the foot of the cross, saved by your grace, filled with your Holy Spirit, and we are forever grateful for that. And it is in the matchless name of Jesus we pray. And all God's people said, amen. If there's anyone today who would like prayer for anything, whether it's something you can talk about and you want to talk about, whether you want to talk to Pastor Cindy, myself, I'm sure Tanya would love to talk and pray with you, or maybe someone sitting around you. Let me just invite you that if the Holy Spirit is impressing on your heart to open up about something, I trust that he's doing it for your good and for your healing. If there's uh, any other thing, that if, if there's something that can't be taken care of today, this Sunday morning, and you need to contact someone, one of the pastoral staff in the office, we'd love to meet and pray with you. There is a prayer chapel right outside there of the Friendship Area. If you need just some time alone today or any time during the week, feel free to make that a place of prayer for yourself. Let's stand up and let's sing together. Draw me close to you Never let me go I lay it all down again To hear you say that I'm your friend You are my take your place to feel the warmth of your embrace help me find the way bring me back to you Lord bring me back to you forward Ashton and Amy. You'll remember Amy from a couple weeks ago. She was baptized. And uh, how long have you guys been coming here to White Park? It's been within the year. Okay, that's what I was thinking in my mind. So they've been coming to White Park since about Easter. And I remember one of the first times I talked to you guys, you were kind of checking out churches and stuff. And you talked about being from a smaller church where you felt sort of the love of a family. And they said they have come back because they've sensed that sort of love of family in this place. That's, that's you all out there. So I want to say thank you for welcoming Ashton and Amy into the church, and they're ready to become members of the church. Amy was baptized a couple weeks ago, and so as we do here at Wyatt Park Christian Church, Jesus is number one. He's our king, and so we ask, uh, do you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God? I do. And so with that, we welcome you as members of the church, and I would like to... <laughs> Amen. You as a congregation, would you affirm with, with, with your voice today that we're bringing in Ashton and Amy, that we're going to support them with our gifts as they seek to follow Jesus with us? If that's true, would you say, we will? We will. We will indeed. Let's pray. Father, we want to thank you so much for Ashton and Amy and for uh, their, their life together, for their kids, uh, for their careers, for the spiritual gifts that you've get. They've already been getting involved in a number of things here in the church. 
I thank you for Amy's, uh, her willingness to be baptized in front of people a few weeks ago. I know there's some people that uh, have taken great courage in, in seeing that happen. Lord, as we gather together with them, as we join arms with them to serve your kingdom in this earth, I pray that you would bless us and make us, make us a shining light here in St. Joseph as your Holy Spirit forms Jesus within all of us. We pray these things in Jesus' name and all God's people said, amen. amen. Now, friends, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. You guys want to join me?